So, last year I said that I would begin documenting my attempt to finish a piece of work that I have wanted to finish for a long time. A piece of work that initially I began drafting and writing sections of in 2018 and would keep putting aside and then returning to and then adding to and then putting aside and I have I have distinct memories of write, like rewriting sections of this in 2019 and then uh, the start of 2020 here in Canada uh, returning to it again and then last year reorganizing my notes because a lot of this existed uh, on paper or across several different documents and combining them all into one single place and uh, as I may have told you before discovering that I'd written uh, about I think it was 16,000 words uh, some of that was entirely complete sections some of it wasn't that is uh, for reference what can I compare that to it's a quarter of a book or um, what I was trying to do was write something that was similar to a piece I wrote years back called A Year in Stardew Valley and that is more than three times as big as that uh, I have been working on this some more and I have occasionally given you updates via this Patreon and people have sometimes told me uh, that I should not worry about always providing updates or work and simply get on with the things that I'm doing which is very kind of you to remind me to do that I might have finished this piece of work that has taken me some time uh, and as part of chronicling this process, I want to talk not a lot with this update, but I want to tell you a little about this. Uh, it is a piece of work about a famous video game and uh, some life experiences and some of what is in this is very personal and actually hasn't been difficult to write about. Writing some of these um, personal things has been the easy part of the process. Writing about the video game has been a difficult part of the process because the video game is uh, uh, complex and has a lot of different things in which I wanted to return to and touch on because I wanted to echo things in the game from real life and vice versa which is uh, as I've done before in other pieces of writing uh, and I also as I've perhaps intimated with some updates that I've given previously uh, over the last few years had a mixture of different challenges with I guess physical health, mental health, motivation, how I feel about writing uh, and other things that have always come first. Other things I've always had to put aside uh, and because this is a piece of work that I will now try to place somewhere as in I will now try to sell it to somebody. I have to try and pitch it uh, as what's known as a spec piece and I've no idea where it'll be picked up and I think uh, I've been working on this with the idea that it could be broken in two sections. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to publish this as one single thing. I think it can hopefully be turned into a series that might be hopefully good, interesting reading. Otherwise, I don't know where this goes. Uh, it can go on my Patreon, but I also think if it does, I don't know how many people will read it or how far it will reach because... That can be a bit of a crapshoot. That said, my gender essay last year, which was a big confidence boost for my writing, went very far, went a lot further than I expected. That was a piece that I really struggled to articulate and to finish. And when I put that up, I thought, well, this is decent and, you know, people should like it. Uh, and then found that for a piece of work on like a relatively small Patreon that I only I put up on social media a couple of times that reached thousands and thousands and thousands of people and that's not usually what happens with the work on my Patreon because it's usually a relatively small circle of really interested people and then maybe another circle beyond that so that was a surprise that was an experience uh, but a confidence booster but I, I would like this to be published by people who uh, in a place where lots of people will see it, uh, as was the case with the year in Stardew Valley. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take, so I don't know when I can next give you like a, a Patreon video update like this where I tell you 
about some progress or things that I'm doing. But what I can give you in the meantime is some summaries of some things I've done um, and maybe a few lessons I learned working on something that was personally important to me for a long time. Uh, number one, I think, is if you have something that you really want to do and that really matters to you, it will, I mean, I want to say something creative, but maybe not even creative things, it will nag you infinitely until you do it. It will never stop being in the back of your mind. And uh, there are whole sections of this that, of this piece of writing that like they've churned around so much in my mind that um, it's almost like I know them by by heart and that feels so strange that they've some of this has stayed in my head for so long um, I think number two I would say is that you can have as many writing or creative ideas as possible but until you come to what I call the edit which is you hurl everything onto the page um, I'd compare it to they're like pieces of a puzzle or a jigsaw but I have to shape them until they actually click together and I don't know which order they go in and that has been uh, my experience with this piece of work and I think Probably as I continue to do a bit of editing, things may, may still be reordered with this piece of work. I think it is very helpful for writers out there all the time to really to talk about edi editing, think about their editing processes, talk about their editing processes, and explain writing to other people as something that is absolutely not linear, where you don't start at the t top of paragraph one and finish at the end and type the end because you're done, that's not how it works. Uh, I think it is a process of sorting and prioritizing and certainly what I did with this piece of work was found themes and found where things flowed well even if they didn't exactly go in a chronological order uh, or found where things should touch on or echo back to something else. Uh, and so that involved writing a lot of small sections in a very linear way often very sort of impulsively and very easily and very quickly uh, and then occasionally having to throw some of those away and then having to change some of the, the other ones and then having to uh, as far as I can in my head or how can I explain this well almost looking at the page zoom out and start to move things around lesson number three I found as I've got older and I start to work differently because editing was also not as much of my process when I was, say, a writer in my 20s. I never thought this would be the thing, but I dictate now. I dictate my ideas, and I have dictated paragraphs of writing, uh, or at least sections of writing, or particularly critical ideas. And I always associated this with nerdy, weird, boring people who uh, would put ideas into a dictaphone but actually that really works for me. Very often uh, the ideas are coming out of my head now at a speed where I, and sometimes in a place where I, I'm not at a keyboard anyway, I generally try to have a notebook, notebook with me most of the time if I'm you know out somewhere for some substantial period of time. But I increasingly, I don't take notes on my phone by tapping something out, I just, dictate into my phone and the imperfect but actually pretty good speech recognition will just pop out a sentence in front of me and this will be the first written work of mine like that where I've never done this before. There's going to be sections that in the final piece I think are almost the same as they came out of my mouth as they, they appeared in my head as sentences that I could I, almost immediately start to pull out of my mouth and just speak. And it's not the first time this has happened. This is ha happening to me more and more often in life. But uh, this has happened in the past where occasionally is <sighs> speaking something is already the final form that it needs to be. And I feel like maybe doing a lot of dialogue writing in my life and doing 
a lot of theatre and stage. I don't know, maybe that somehow affects how I form sentences on the fly and how sometimes not trying to write something but actually articulating it from my mouth, raw, works really well. That's something that had been a huge surprise to me and something I never thought would happen. Uh, and if there is a fourth lesson from all of this, um, beyond time, beyond editing, beyond speech things, it's more than ever life will absolutely get in the way of you realizing things that are important to you if you let it and i don't know how to fence that off yet i don't know how to carve out those boundaries because clearly i failed over the years like some of the work that I've been doing on this, I've been able to just, if I've been able to find down a, find a couple of weeks to sit down and prioritize this task, I make a lot of progress. I mean, I can easily write, you know, a couple of thousand words in a day of something that is passable quality. I have always known that I've been able to do this, but this uh, this work, I could have finished a lot of this a long time ago if I'd had a period of time where I felt I could set things aside and just do it, and I haven't. Whether it's been life events or other work, other commissions, other things that I've been tasked to do, some of which I am now again doing in life, which hopefully I can talk about soon, because I can't talk about some stuff I'm doing yet. Uh, but, but, wow. Um... So much got in the way of finishing this piece of work. And the only thing is, uh, as I think I've, sure I've hinted at, I'm sure I've hinted at before, you know, I'm nervous about trying to put anything out there that has taken so long because it, in some ways it is never going to be worth the amount of time that I put into it. It's ne it can never uh, justify the weight, but hopefully it can justify the energy and the passion and the nagging guilt that I felt inside myself because I've let I have let things get in my way of completing this and I have uh, not been able to complete this because some things have overwhelmed me or forced me to always push this aside I have a lot of feelings about this and only some of them are fear and anticipation and concern about whether this will work. A lot of the other feelings of regret about things taking so long, um, disappointment maybe in my own lack of confidence, and I want to say, I don't know, shock or surprise, uh, just... Like I remember sitting down and writing paragraphs of this stuff that remain almost unchanged on a beach in England like four years ago now. Uh, and I'm very proud of that, some of these things, and I think they remain good. But I don't know how to describe this to you. Sometimes I sit down and I write a piece of work in an evening that spontaneously comes out of nowhere, and I think it's good and I can send it somewhere, and it's done. I have the, I was first, <laughs> it was half, it was half a life ago that I was first paid and it was again summer so it was 21 years ago, I'm 42, that I was first paid for my first piece of professional writing uh, and I was absolutely overjoyed um, and it was a bit of a challenge to do that piece of work and it was just a half page piece of work in a magazine about video games. But the more I do this, the more time I spend doing creative things, the less I understand I am not the same person. It's not just that I am not the same person. I am not even the same writer. I don't work the same way anymore. What does that mean for the work I'm going to do next? It's not necessarily bad or scary. But what does that mean? 
Thanks for joining me for 15 minutes of weird video reflections. I don't know if this update will be exciting to you. It's uh, a little bit exciting to me, but now again that I've actually told you this and put this information out there, I've made it even more real again that I have to now try and pitch this work to people and I don't know where it will go. I don't know if it'll... In my head, it becomes part of a series published online on a on, on a website belonging to people I've freelanced for before. Uh, but there's other options. I don't know, does it appear in a collection somewhere? I don't know. Now, now comes the next challenge. Thanks uh, for watching this. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks to all the people who followed this weird journey that I admit has mostly happened out of your view anyway and listen to me try to explain something that I can't explain to myself. If you find any part of this like validating or, uh, you know, that makes you feel better about how you work or what you do, I'm very glad. It makes me feel more confused than ever. Thanks again.